If you enjoy what you hear here today, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page. Every dollar helps, and you get to see content that you won't see here. Chapter 4 Arrival The whistle of the train brought Silver Quill back to reality. He had been leaning on the window next to him, gazing out at the scenery as it zipped by almost too fast for the eye to follow. The train ride had lasted for several hours, and he spent most of that time just thinking about how he was going to spend his time in Ponyville. He stood up and started to gather his luggage as the train slowed down, and the resulting squeal pierced the interior. As he stepped off the train, he took a deep breath and looked around at the unfamiliar environment. And he had to say, he was fairly pleased with what he saw. Small houses and other buildings were what made up a good portion of the town. The largest building in the town, as far as he could see, was the town hall, and even that was pretty small as far as Canterlot standards were concerned. A breeze blew through the outside of the station, bringing with it a thin smell of tilled earth and nature. It was relaxing, and Silverco could already feel his work-weary mind calming down already. I think this place will do just fine, he said softly to himself. Now I just need to find the library, and I can begin my days of rest and relaxation. Rest and relaxation? Shoot, I think you're in the wrong town for that, partner said a voice with a charming country drawl from behind him. Silvercoal turned to see a freckled, bright orange mare standing next to him, grinning. What do you mean by that? he replied. The orange pony gave a small shrug. Ponyville ain't like Canterlot with all its easy-peasy apple-squeezy days of sitting around letting your muscle shrivel. If you're planning on living with us here in this town, you gotta be prepared to work. Silvercoat shook his head. Oh, no, you misunderstand. I'm not moving here. I'm taking my vacation here. The orange mare's eyes flashed with comprehension. Oh, that makes much more sense. Sorry about that. Just didn't want y'all to come here thinking it's all fun and games. Then get bucked in the face by reality. <laughs> she chuckled a bit at her little joke. Silvercoat looked at her oddly. I see. Does that happen often, then? He asked. The pony bobbed her head indecisively for a moment before speaking. Uh, you don't see it all the time, but I ain't seen them ponies who haven't so much as washed the dishes come here thinking things are all going to be hunky-dory. Her eyes then widened as she came to a horrific realization. Oh, shucks, where are my manners? The pony grabbed one of Silverquill's hooves between two of hers and shook it violently enough to shake his entire body. My name's Applejack, oldest daughter of the Apple family, at your service. When she finally let go of his hoof from her deceptively strong grip, Silver rubbed his shoulder painfully. <laughs> he was going to be feeling that one for a little while. Maybe his muscles really were weak. He smiled politely at her while making an effort to hide the grimace from his now sore foreleg. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Applejack. My name is Silverquill. He gave a small, polite bow along with his introduction, which only elicited a giggle from her. <laughs> well, shucks. Look at you being all prim and proper. You're probably going to want to loosen your saddle a bit if you want to stay in Ponyville, especially if you're here on vacation. Elsewise, you'll stick out like a banana tree in an apple orchard. Silverco looked up at her with a slightly bemused expression on his face. I see. I'll, uh, keep that in mind. Applejack nodded wisely, content with his answer. Glad to hear it. She then perked up as something came to her. Say, didn't you say something about needing to find the library? Oh, right. That completely slipped my mind, said Silverquill. That's where I'll be staying, with the librarian who so graciously allowed me to stay in her home during my vacation. Uh, would you mind giving me a hand and pointing out where it is? An expression of puzzlement flashed across her face briefly before being replaced by a big, friendly smile, accompanied by a slap on his back. I'll do you one better than that, partner. I'll show you where it is myself. Silverquill was quick to do the polite thing and gently decline her offer. 
Oh, that's really not necessary, Applejack. Although it's very kind of you to offer. I'm sure you're very busy, and I hate to take up any more of your time. Just tell me where to go, and I'll be out of your hair. Applejack shook her head stubbornly, her long ponytail swaying from side to side. Nope, I insist. You don't seem to be a friendly fellow, and it's only the neighborly thing to do. And please, call me AJ. All my friends do. Well, Silvercoat could see he had about as much chance of dissuading herself from going out of her way for him as he did in burning all of his books, so he relented. <laughs> all right then, AJ. If you insist, then I'd be most grateful if you would show me the way. Applejack nodded as though she expected nothing else, and waved a hoof signaling for him to follow her. Well, I'll just stick with me, and we'll be there in 20 minutes or so. Silvercoat did as he was told, and went to walk beside her as they left the train station. He was starting to feel grateful that he had packed as lightly as possible, knowing that if there was anything he needed, he had more than enough money to keep himself covered. Silver would have been content with walking in a companionable silence, though Applejack had a different idea, and started to strike up a conversation. So, Silver, uh, do you mind if I call you Silver? Great. So, Silver, I have to admit to being slightly curious. Of all the places where someone could take a vacation, Jamaica, New York, or the Winnipeans, what made you pick Ponyville? Silverco looked at her wryly. To be honest, AJ, I didn't choose to come to Ponyville. That choice was made for me by Princess Luna. When Applejack's eyes widened with surprise, he explained further. You see, I'm a writer by trade. As of late, I've been going through sort of a creativity drought. I haven't been able to write a sentence to save my life. Luna, uh, who is a good friend of mine, decided that I needed a vacation to help through this little dry spell. She decided that Ponyville would be the best place for me, and she also decided that living with the town librarian, one Twilight Sparkle, would help me relax in an unfamiliar environment. Silver's brow furrowed with thought. Well, at least I think that's why she arranged me to live in the library. She's a riddle wrapped in an enigma sometimes, that princess. Applejack had been nodding along, fascinated by Silverquill's relationship with Luna. Well, isn't she just the nicest little thing, helping out a friend like that? I'm glad to hear that Luna's making friends up there. We don't see her down here much in Ponyville, but every time we do, she always looks kind of lonely. Really lonely. Silver nodded slowly. I see. He had known that she didn't have many friends, of course, but he just chalked that up to her being kind of like him. A pony who preferred having a close circle of only a few friends rather than a bunch of more distant ones. He didn't realize that she was downright sad and lonely, although, in retrospect, it seemed glaringly obvious. Oh well, hindsight is twenty twenty and all that. Silverquill shook himself out of his thoughtful reverie and focused his attention to the mare he was walking with. All right, that's enough about me, I think. What about you? Tell me about yourself, AJ. Abadak scrunched up her face in thought. Well, I'm the oldest daughter in the Apple family. I work over on Sweet Apple Acres, which is on the edge of town. It's an apple farm, in case you weren't able to tell by the name. I spend most of my days apple bucking and taking care of the cattle on the farm and basically making sure that the place is in tip-top shape. That's pretty much it. Oh, and I just came back from Manhattan from visiting family for a few days. There. That's about it. She gave him a broad, toothy grin, which he weakly returned. I see. You sound like a very busy pony. As they walked and talked, Silver kept looking around the town and getting a feel for it. There weren't nearly as many ponies as there were in Canterlot, and the ponies that were here seemed to be a lot more friendly and approachable. Everything was a lot less high class, the buildings were focused more on practicality than they were attractiveness, and the ponies weren't walking with their noses so high in the air that they couldn't see their own hooves. Silverquill breathed in deeply. The air was far cleaner here. In Canterlot, the large number of ponies, along with the rapid increase of industrial machines in recent years, had been giving the city a sort of dirty smell. Silver never really noticed it before now, but air in Ponyville was so much more... crisp. 
like a big red apple ripened to absolute perfection with just the right balance of tart, sweetness, and bitterness. You know, AJ? I really think I'm going to enjoy it here, Silverquill said wistfully. <laughs> Applejack nodded her head enthusiastically. You bet your boots you will. Ponyville is a real nice place with only the friendliest ponies. And you'll be staying with my good pal Twilight, and she'll make sure that y'all will be comfortable. Although I gotta say, I hadn't heard anything from her about letting some pony she's never met before live with her. Her eyes narrowed slightly. Wait, have you met before? Silverquill shook his head. Not to my knowledge, no. And my vacation was very sudden, so it wasn't like she knew about it for a long time. She only got the letter asking her if she'd be willing to house me yesterday. Oh, well, that makes a lot more sense. Ah, well, speaking of, here we are, the library. Applejack and Silverquill stopped walking in front of the larger buildings in Ponyville, except it wasn't a building. It was a huge oak tree. Silverquill was a bit confused by this. Why would you have a library in a tree? More than that, how would you make a library in a tree? After some thought, he decided to pay it no mind. Books are made from paper, and paper comes from trees. He decided that that would be a sufficient enough explanation to sate him for now. All right then, Silver Quill. I gotta get back to the farm. Been gone for a while, and I'm sure my little sis misses me. Silver Quill nodded and gave one of his signature small smiles. Well, thanks a lot for helping me, AJ. I appreciate it. No problem, partner. I'll be seeing you around. And with that, she trotted off, her saddlebags bouncing on her sides as she went back to her farm. Silvercoal trotted up to the front door of the tree and knocked three times. He heard the soft sound of footsteps before the door was opened by a small purple dragon with rounded green spines running up and down his back and tail. The dragon was barely higher than Silvercoal's legs, so it had to look up on addressing him. Uh, can I help you? It asked in an undoubtedly male voice that sounded to be very young. Hi there, I'm Silverquill. The dragon blinked and looked around Silverquill to see if there was any pony else. He almost looked like he thought this was a joke, and he was the only one who didn't get it. You're gonna have to give me a bit more than that, buddy. The dragon's face was completely deadpan, and he definitely had no idea what Silverquill was doing here. He started to feel nervous. Had Applejack shown him to the wrong tree building? Did Celestia make a mistake? Maybe she contacted the wrong student and somewhere over on Las Pegasus there was a unicorn expecting a mentally jaded author to show up and stay for a while. Silverquill cleared his throat and tried once more to explain his position. Well, I'm to meet a pony named Twilight Sparkle who kindly agreed to share her... tree... While I'm staying in Ponyville. At this, the dragon's face lit up with realization and excitement. Oh, you're that pony. <laughs> Why didn't you just say so? Come on in, I'll show you around. The dragon stepped aside as Silverquill walked in. This mirror must be quite the bibliophile, he thought to himself. Everywhere he looked, there was either a bookcase filled to bursting with all sorts of literature or neat piles of books sitting scattered around the room. Although I suppose that's the job requirement to be a librarian. The dragon went over to the stairs on the other side of the room, leading to the floor below, and yelled out, Twilight, we've got company! Silvergold heard a muffled reply of a mare's voice answer him. Spike turned back to Silvergold and rubbed his claws together in anticipation. All right, apparently it's my job to make you feel welcome while Twilight is finishing up her work, so... Is there anything I can get you? Something to drink? Fruit, maybe? A glass of water would be most appreciated, thanks. While the dragon went and rummaged around in the kitchen, Silverquill took it upon himself to examine the books that filled the shelves and were stacked around the room. Maybe he could get an idea of what this mare was like before he met her. He walked around the room, taking notice of as many titles as he could. The Three-Hoofed Beggar... Tales of the Philadelphian Gentle Cult, Four Steps from Home, Hubris and Bias, 
<laughs> this pony was definitely well-read. He noticed that there was also an abundance of books based on astronomy and astrology, along with a great number of star charts that all seemed to be used by the mayor exclusively. The telescope on the other side of the room pointing out of the window convinced him that it was for her personal use and not public property. Spike, the young purple dragon, came out with two cups in hand, one filled with clear water and ice and the other with orange juice. He handed the water to Silverquill, who nodded his thanks, and took a drink. After that, Silver tried to start up some small talk, not wanting to just stand there in an awkward silence. So, Spike, right? What do you do around here? Spike thought for a moment before answering. I pretty much do whatever needs to be done. Things like cleaning, organizing, cooking, note-taking, errands, stuff like that. Spike puffed out his chest in pride, making him look like a scaly purple pigeon. I'm Twilight's number one assistant. Spike then looked at the stairs leading to the basement. Speaking of Twilight, she sure is taking her sweet time. He walked over to the stairs and yelled down. Twilight, it's rude to keep your guests waiting, you know. Then exasperated voice came back up. I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't get your tail in a twist. Spike looked at Silverquill apologetically. Sorry about that. She can get really focused on her work sometimes. She's in the basement right now organizing some of our older books that no pony else is allowed to touch, which is kind of silly if you ask me. What's the point of keeping so many books if no pony else can read them? Silverquill answered immediately, barely even thinking about the question. It's not reading them that's important, but the preservation of old historical and cultural texts. Finally, somebody who understands, said a voice coming from the stairs to the basement. The mayor walked up the rest of the way at the staircase and stopped at the top to greet Silverquill. I've been trying to teach him that for years, but he never seems to understand. Spike just rolled his eyes at her and sipped at his orange juice. <clears throat> anyway, she said while starting to walk towards Silverquill. My name is Twilight Sparkle, the resident librarian of Ponyville. You must be Silverquill. I have to admit, I've been excited to meet you. A fellow book lover. Impossible. So, uh, Princess Celestia told me in her letter that you're a writer and need to get over a nasty case of writer's block. Inconceivable. Okay, maybe we could talk about something else? Are you friends with Princess Celestia or something? I imagine you would have to be for her to ask if you could temporarily stay with me. Unimaginable. Unthinkable. Insurmountable. Preposterous. Downright irrealizable. Hey, are you alright? You're shaking and you're blinking awfully fast. Is something wrong? Yes, as a matter of fact, something was wrong. Or at least, the logical side of Silverquill thought there was. The other side, however... The sentimental side that Silverquill had long conquered and forced to submit under his will was absolutely giddy with joy. It squealed in its baffling delight, for in front of Silverquill was the Lavender Filly. <laughs>